Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the RBC Bearings Fiscal 2021 Third Quarter Earnings Conference Call. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Later, we will conduct a question and answer session, and instructions will follow at that time. If anyone should require assistance during the conference, please press star, then zero on your touchtone telephone. As a reminder, this conference call is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to your host, Michael Cummings with Alpha IR. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for RBC Bearings Fiscal 2021 Third Quarter Earnings Conference Call. With me on the call today are Dr. Michael J. Hartnett, Chairman, President, and Chief Executive Officer, Daniel A. Bergeron, Director, Vice President, and Chief Operating Officer, and Robert Sullivan, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer. Before beginning today's call, let me remind you that some of the statements made today will be forward-looking and are made under the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. Actual results may differ materially from those projected or implied due to a variety of factors. We refer you to RBC Barron's recent filings with the SEC for a more detailed discussion of the risks that could impact the company's future operating results and financial condition. These factors are also described in greater detail in the press release and on the company's website. In addition, reconciliation between GAAP and non-GAAP financial information is included as part of the release and is available on the company's website. Now, I'll turn the call over to Dr. Hartnett. Thank you, Mike, and good morning. Um, net sales for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 were $145.9 million versus $177.0 million for the same period last year, a decrease of 17.6%. For the third quarter of 2021, sales of industrial products represented 44% of our net sales and aerospace products 56%. Gross margin for the quarter was $55.6 million, or 38.1% of net sales. This compares to $70.7 million, or 39.9% for the same period last year. Adjusted operating income was, was $27.9 million, or 19.1% of net sales, compared to last year, $37.8 million, and 21.4%. Adjusted EBITDA was $41 million, 28.1% of net sales, compared to $50.9 million, 28.7% of net sales for the same period last year. We ended the quarter with over $200 million in cash and marketable securities and roughly $20 million in debt. And year-to-date free cash flow was a record $102 million. We entered the second quarter with better visibility to customer requirements than past periods and saw an encouraging increase for product from industrial OEMs as well as stabilization of demand from the aircraft sector. We continue to work through an environment complicated by enhanced safety procedures to manage the COVID menace and and this environment has almost become um, normal practice for us today. Sales of industrial products were up 5.5% from last year and sequentially up 8.5%. Prime drivers in the industrial sector are the following markets. Uh, Wind power, where the green revolution is generating a need for ever larger wind machines, some as large as 220 meters in diameter, requiring advanced blade designs and machine mechanics, leading to higher efficiencies. Um, Number two is marine, the build-out of the Virginia submarine fleet with extended weaponry and the funding of the Columbia Ballistic Missile Submarine is driving substantial need for hydraulic hardware and engineering support. Um, Three is semiconductor, a greater use of computer chips in automobiles, phones, games, self-driving cars, and 5G technology has created shortage in this industry and producers are expanding capital budgets like never before to project to protect their market positions. And finally, train, mass movement of people in Asia is a priority as China continues to and an extremely ambitious goal of connecting her cities with high-speed rail. 
We are working in all these markets today with proven products and solutions as well as new design proposals for, pro for problem solving in acquiring new customers. Turning now to aerospace and defense, <clears throat> the third quarter of fiscal 2021, sales were down 29.7%. The abrupt suspension of the 737 MAX production in March resulted in excess inventory of aircraft hardware throughout the system. This is reflected in this exaggerated decline and will likely be with us for another quarter. We work with customers during the second and into the third quarter to reschedule product deliveries. Most of that is not, if not all, is behind us today. We are encouraged by the release of the MAX for commercial use, and our plans are now to support the Boeing build rate of between 150 and 160 MAX ships in calendar 2021, moving to over 300 in calendar 2022. And we are very heartened to see a 10% expansion announced by Airbus in 2021, followed by a 20% expansion in 2022 for the A320 ship. Their plan to build almost 800 total ships in 2022 is uh, inspiring to all of us. During the period, we consolidated plant operations in two locations to streamline our cost structure and drive its efficiencies of execution. We expect a little bit of more of this in the future. Regarding our fourth quarter, we are expecting sales to be between 155 and 160 million dollars. I'll now turn the call over to Rob for more detail on our financial performance. Thank you, Mike. Since Mike has already covered net sales and gross margin, I'll jump down to SGNA. SGNA for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 was 25.7 million compared to 30.7 million for the same period last year. The decrease was mainly due to lower personnel costs of 4.4 million and 0.6 million of other items. As a percentage of net sales, SGNA was 17.6% for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 compared to 17.4% for the same period last year. Other operating expense for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 was expense of 3.3 million compared to expense of 2.5 million for the same period last year. For the third quarter of fiscal 2021, other operating expenses were comprised mainly of 2.6 million in amortization of intangible assets, 0.5 million of restructuring costs and related items, and 0.2 million of other items. Other operating expense for the same period last year consisted mainly of 2.5 million in amortization of intangible assets. Operating income for, was $26.5 million for the third quarter of fiscal 2021, compared to operating income of $37.5 million for the same period in fiscal 2020. On an adjusted basis, operating income would have been $27.9 million for the third quarter of fiscal 2021, compared to adjusted operating income of $37.8 million for the third quarter of fiscal 2020. For the third quarter of fiscal 2021, the company reported net income of $21.6 million compared to net income of $30.5 million for the same period last year. On an adjusted basis, net income would have been $22.7 million for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 compared to adjusted net income of $30.4 million for the same period last year. Diluted earnings per share was $0.86 cents for, per share for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 compared to $1.22 per share for the same period last year. On an adjusted basis, diluted EPS for the third quarter of fiscal 2021 was $0.90 cents per share, compared to adjusted diluted EPS of $1.22 per share for the same period last year. Turning to cash flow, the company generated $36.1 million in cash from operating activities in the third quarter of fiscal 2021, compared to $46.6 million for the same period last year, and $110.6 million in cash from operating activities for the nine-month period during fiscal 2021 compared to $111.2 million for the same nine-month period last year. Capital expenditures were $2.8 million in the third quarter of fiscal 2021, compared to $7.3 million for the same period last year. On a nine-month basis, capital expenditures were $8.8 million, compared to $27.6 million for the same nine-month period last year. Total debt as of December 26, 2020 was $20.5 million, and cash and marketable securities on hand were $201.7 million. I would now like to turn the call back to the operator for the question and answer session. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press the star and then the number one key on your touchtone telephone. 
If your question has been answered or you wish to remove yourself from the queue, please press the pound key. Your first question is from the line of Pete Skibitsky with Alembic Global. Hey, good morning, guys. Nice quarter. Um, hey, hey, Mike, in terms of fourth quarter margin, you know, if you do get some volume, it, it looks like you're signaling that the fourth quarter would probably be your highest revenue quarter of the fiscal year. So are, are you thinking that it will also be your highest adjusted operating margin rate quarter as well, or, are, are, you know, might you have some uh, mixed headwinds? No, I think I, I, I think the uh, your former conclusion there was right. Um, it'll be our highest margin, highest um, operating income quarter. Okay, okay, gotcha. Um, and then my other question was just uh, your your comments on the Boeing numbers. I think the 150 to 160 that must be new bills as, as opposed to delivering from a Boeing inventory. So just on the timing. Are you expecting to, you know, ship the majority of your deliveries on the MAX um, in the first half of the year on, in terms of their 150 to 160, and then in the second half of your year you start to deliver to them what they are, will deliver in 2022 until so we have this building That's effect? Is, is that, yeah, uh, you, you have that right. So, so I think the first half of the year we're going to be working on that, you know, work, working through that 155, 160 rate kind of thing um, for calendar 2021, right? But that'll that'll pretty pretty much uh, by July we'll be building into the um, um, the 300 plus rate for uh, 2022. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last last question for me is just on um, on the aftermarket side. Does it feel like you have more visibility kind of forward six to 12 months? on the OE side versus the aftermarket side, just because we're kind of still in the doldrums traffic-wise? or kind of, How are you guys thinking about the um, predictability of your aftermarket revenue in the, in the midterm? Um, well, you know, the, the aftermarket revenue is, is really short cycle business, and uh, you know, there's never much backlog there. It, it, you know, it, um, it, it's, it's in and out within. As a matter of fact, there's you know, the big measure there is turnaround time from the time you get the order to the time you get the hardware to the time you ship the hardware back is, is uh, pretty important to that, to that industry. So, um, yeah, well, there, there's not much backlog going with, with aftermarket, but we do see strength in the aftermarket. Okay. You know, we we see yeah, strength returning in the aftermarket. Let me put it that way. Okay. That's why I think a lot of people are wondering, you know, we've seen so many – Retirements of older aircraft. People are wondering if there'll be a, you know, sustained aftermarket bathtub, if you will. But it, it sounds like you don't subscribe to that view per se. Well, I, I think a lot of these, you know, the, a lot of the carriers, you know, downsized their maintenance departments, and uh, you know, you now are looking for, you know, third-party, you know, support in order to um, to service their planes. So that's that's a um, a mechanism that's working for us. Okay, okay. Okay, great. Thanks for the call, guys. Your next question is from the line of Steve Barger with KeyBank Capital. Thanks. Good morning. Uh, really nice to see a return to growth for the industrial business. Are you expecting another mid-single-digit increase in 4Q? Yes. Yeah, we are. Yeah, it, okay. it's, it, it, 4Q is doing very well on the industrial side. That's so as I think about that in the context of your guidance, that suggests another maybe mid-20% decline for Aero. Uh, and, and just as I think about how that flows into the next fiscal year, um, just looking at the comps, would you expect that 1Q is still down on Aero and then you get back to growth in 2Q, 3Q, 4Q? Um, that's kind of what we're thinking. Yeah, it, you know, it's... it's uh That, that's that's pretty much how we're 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 beginning to see it. The, 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 the there's some there's some strange things happening too on top of that. In, in that um, you know Boeing Boeing goes through uh, contract cycles with all their subcontractors, and they're you know going through contract cycles right now and changing subcontractors. And of course we supply the subcontractors product, so um, and we supply it under certain 
contractual terms that uh, are negotiated, and and uh, and so so the new guys um, that are getting contract awards going forward, beginning in 2022, are um, just taking their seats right now and not quite understanding, you know, what their needs are for our kinds of products. So there's a little bit of delay between when they um, get their contract and when they actually um, place orders with us. And, uh, and so that's, that's creating a little bit of fuzz. And ultimately what's going to happen is they're going to need product um, uh, in a, in, a, in a cycle that's much shorter than the lead time for our for our for our bearings or other you know, structural mechanisms and um, and small crises day to day crises will be created so we're trying to figure out how to manage through that with all of our divisions that support that that sector to make sure that we're on top of um, you know our mix and our content per ship and the ship build rates and um, who the new um, contract holders are going to be and what their needs are going to be so that we don't get caught short. And uh, so it's just a typical, it's a typical, um, you know, five-year event when you're supplying a, a big OEM like Boeing. So should my takeaway be that your fiscal 1Q22 doesn't necessarily have to be negative? It actually could be positive if, if they pull that forward, or that actually 2Q could be negative like 1Q while they kind of work it out? Well, I don't see Q2 being negative because, um, you know, uh, they, they just, you know, they won't, the lead times won't support the requir Boeing's requirements. And so that's right. going to be that's going to be a problem for everybody. So um, you know it'll it'll all get sorted out. Right now it's a, it's a, it's it's going to be a scramble. Um, you know whether one Q is down as much as four Q. Um, uh, I don't I don't really see that happening given given the um, the build rate in 20, 2022 that we have to support. Right. Because you'll be shipping those six or nine months early, right? Those parts yeah. for the 20, yeah, yeah, got it. Exactly. Okay, so 1Q down, but then growth resuming after that. And presumably you have the expectation that you're looking at positive growth for the entire year, fiscal year for 22 on the industrial side, just given how those trends are going. Correct. Okay. And so as I think about that volume coming back on both sides, um, you know, FY21 will be down maybe 150 basis points on operating margin versus uh, FY20. As you think about growth coming back and managing SG&A, how much of that 150 basis points that you lost do you think you can recover in FY22? Well, um, let's hope we can recover it all, right? And um, <clears throat> let's let's create a process that's better than hope. <laughs> <laughs> so, right on. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, I think, I think that right, right now the, the margins are, are down um, the, the amount that you referenced there, at large, largely because um, we see the industry coming back and the demands coming back on us. And so we're, you know, retaining as much human capacity as we could possibly retain to be able to support the market on the other side of this and uh, and so that's that's our ex that's that that's really our strategy so we should be Got able it. to we should be able to back into those new revenues um, and and recover the margins that that's the theory okay and then I'm gonna ask one more and then I'll get back in line when we we talk about the M&A pipeline every quarter. Your balance sheet's obviously in great shape. You got a ton of cash. Um, is can you can you frame up for us where you are in the process of talking to some of these private companies? And and just as a an add-on, are there any smaller public companies out there that you would ever consider taking out? Um, yes, y yes, and yes. Um, so I mean, we're we're pretty active on the um, on the acquisition side. Um, 
in terms of uh, candidates. And, um, and we've been active in terms of, of proposals, but we haven't been um, achieving is uh, successful closings. And so um, it's a very um, competitive world out there for some of these assets. And, uh, and so we're in the mix, but um, we, you know, and we're, we're, bid we're bidding generously, um, but we haven't, we haven't won some of these bids. Just because there's other money out there that is, that is more aggressive or generous than you? It's just, is it that simple? Yeah. In, 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 yeah, exactly. Well, exactly, and, and I'd say we're, we're we're pretty pretty dang generous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, understood. Thanks. Uh, I have some more, but I I'll get back in line. Okay. Again, to ask a question, press star one. And your next question is from the line of Michael Tremoli with True with Security. Well, Michael, you there? Hello? Michael, your line is hey. live. Uh, sorry, guys, I was on mute. Um, <laughs> morning, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the questions. Um, Mike, just to, to stay on, um, you know, what Steve was just hitting at on M&A, and, you know, it sounds like, you know, that there's a lot of, uh, I guess, aggressive uh, valuations being applied out there. But, you know, Maybe in the absence of, of any, you know, deal flow here, you know, you, you certainly have a lot of dry powder. Are you thinking about anything else in the way of, of capital deployment, whether it's, you know, buyback, dividend, or is, is are you guys just razor focused on, on M&A? Yeah, we're pretty, we're pretty razor focused on M&A. This is, this is, uh, there's some, there's some really attractive candidates out there. That would um, that would uh, substantially um, uh, add to our um, to our market positions, and so we're really focused on those candidates. Is it a um, is it a function of size? I mean, is are you seeing um, maybe just you know tightness or increased competition you know across all sizes of deals or is it you know you're going for something a little bit more needle moving yeah i mean we we haven't we haven't really gone after the smaller size uh, deals um okay. and the larger the larger ones you know attract a lot of attention got it got it um okay and then just going back to um maybe the, the margin side. If we think about, you know, coming through this, you know, exiting fiscal 22, I mean, do you guys think you can get, you know, operating margins and gross margins back to those levels, you know, that you were at, you know, in, in fiscal 20? I mean, obviously you've put in a lot more capacity to, to support, certainly on the aerospace side, production rates that, that probably won't happen by, by fiscal 22. But do you, do you think there's any constraints on um, your profitability from excess overhead or, or any kind of stranded costs just because we might be, you know, Boeing and Airbus might be running production below where you guys are sized for? No, no. Um, you know, we don't, we, we don't have – we don't have that stranded cost problem that's, you know, some of the, you know, we're not a steel company. We don't have to keep our furnaces, you know, at temperature 24-7 or anything. We, right. we just don't have those kinds of problems. I mean, we're very, we're very um, variable cost um, uh, um, um, defined. And, uh, and so I, I think the, you know, the, the only reason our margins today are where they are is that we're, Leaving a lot of resources in place to support us on the for the upside. I mean, you know, why why um, why detune the company that you've taken you know a generation to build because you have one year of pandemic. Yep. No, that's fair. Um, just the last one I had. I mean, you, you guys sound a lot more confident on production rates uh, for the max. I mean, Boeing you know, was, was kind of hesitant to say where they're even producing. You know, certainly they've got this aspiration to get to 31. 
you know, Airbus, you know, kind of just dialed back their, their plan to get to 47. You know, what, what's really giving you this, this clear line of sight to, you know, 155, 160, and, you know, kind of 300 plus, you know, next year? Um, well, um, we have a lot of people um, working on these numbers because these numbers are very important to us. So, so and, and, and then, you know, Boeing publishes their skyline chart, and we interpret that skyline, skyline chart, you know, and, and it's out, you know, 24 months. So, um, I mean, we need that in order to, to determine how to load and capitalize and, and staff our plants. So, so, I mean, that's, you know, we, we've got to have that guidance. The whole industry has to have that guidance. Or, or you know, I don't know how, how Boeing would have any, any, any way of getting the support they need to make an airplane. Okay. So and we're just, we're just what, pivoting over off of uh, information that it's flown down, flowed down to us. And and even you know as we're we're talking about the aero trajectory here, obviously your your content on the wide bodies is significantly higher. You know, a couple quarters ago, you know, mentioning that triple triple seven X, which just got you know pushed out even further. It, it, it would certainly seem there's a lot more uncertainty here about a recovery for wide bodies. I mean, is that skyline for wide bodies giving you, you know, telling you anything or giving you any sense of confidence at the at the rates they're at now? And you, you expect kind of your ship set volume there to hold steady on these rates, or, or are you modeling for for any kind of pickup on the wide body platforms you've got exposure to? Well, I, th I think the you know the wide the wide body comes comes back after the after the pandemic is is uh, behind us right so that's that's got a probably got a couple year lead time on it so um you know th this is really a max story i mean the the the, the growth in the max volume um, is it's what what's going to primarily generate the bulk of our you know the bulk of our revenues to the aircraft side you know you know the the, the 87 is going to back off some and and the x and the triple seven X, you know, is going to be pushed out a couple of years. So, um, you know, it's important for those for that max volume to to achieve the uh, the Boeing numbers and and you know the uh, Airbus being up ten percent and and building into eight hundred planes doesn't hurt us either. So, um, yeah, it looks like Airbus is going to you know just just recover fully. Um, by 2023, and, uh, and and Boeing is probably 2025 story before they get back to the numbers that they were in 2019. Got it. Okay. Um, all right. Perfect. Thanks, guys. I'll jump back in the queue here. Yep. Your next question is from the line of Joseph Charleo with Bradley Foster Sargent. Good morning, guys. Thanks for taking my question. Morning. I'm just Morning. curious to how the how the shift of a portion of RBC's back office engineering and R&D functions to Poland, how that's progressing, and how you're sizing up the potential cost savings from these efforts. So, in other words, uh, should this accrue to margins beginning in fiscal fiscal year 2022, or is it more of a fiscal year 2023 story? Thank you. Yeah. Well, it's not a fiscal 2022 story. That's for sure. I mean, it's you, you just you just can't get to Poland and. Uh, you know, travel is is um, difficult to some of those countries, and um, you know, so our our ability to go over there and, and interview people and get them on board has been has been um, 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 it hasn't it hasn't ceased, but it's been delayed, and uh, so the the number of people that we wanted to hire, is, you know, we're probably hiring 10% of the the people that we wanted to hire. This year, and uh, you know, we're in the, in the meantime we're moving fo forward on the whole program. So it's it's a it's 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 a 2023 kind of story. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay, I am showing no further questions at this time. I would now like to turn the conference back to Dr. Hartnett. Okay, well, thank you, and and thank you for participating in the in the call today. Um, hope it was helpful to everyone, 
and uh, we'll uh, we're in the process of uh, executing a, a pretty nice fourth quarter here, and uh, we'll get back to it and talk to you in May. Thanks again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's conference. Thank you for your participation, and have a wonderful day. You may all disconnect.